Hello and thank you for joining us as we create this amazing stained glass Christmas stocking. So one of the joys of this project is that it is specifically done for those massive hoops. And the first thing that you're going to do is lay your fabric and your embroiderer's felt on to your hoop with tearaway stabilizer and you are going to stitch out colorway one and that is going to show you exactly where the mylar or iridescent embroidery film is then going to be placed so just smooth as you go and we've got our outline here and once we've got that outline done, make sure there's nothing there that's going to inhibit that. And take a piece of your iridescent embroidery film or mylar and lay it over the entire project. Now, if you need to put more than one piece together, that is absolutely fine. In this case, I've got one piece that will do the entire thing. And I'm just going to come around and outline that. Now I'm using the Janome CM17 and it has an 11 by 18 inch hoop. And I am using every skerrick of this hoop. So now that we've got the mylar down, we are going to start the stitching. And what we are doing here is layering in our colors on top of the mylar so that they give us a stained glass look. And the stitching you will notice is quite open weave and that's so that that little bit of the mylar pokes through but you can see and you can see the glitter already coming with it I love the fact that iridescent for embroidery film or mylar really does pick up and absorb and reflect all of those different colors so the color guide is included with the instructions, but it's nice and basic. We are going with, so we've got our holly green, then we've got our red for Santa's hat. And dimension is also given just by how those stitches are then curved around the objects that we're stitching. Now, this is probably the longest, and Murphy's Law says you are going to run out of, um, of thread when it is most inconvenient. Okay, so as I said, this one is probably the most intensive of all of the stitches because it is fully stitched right over but it is still quite a quick. Now, I've sped this up so that you don't end up watching this stitch for two hours, but that stitch out was just two hours. And because on this one, there is no joining up or anything, it is a lot easier to go out um, and get other things done whilst you're doing that stitching. Okay, so we've done silver and I've used a King Star metallic silver for Santa's little glasses. And now I'm using a face color. So selecting a color for your face stitching. When you're looking at that, always think about how deep you want that color to be. I go something between a beige and a peach and one of the lightest forms that I can find of that color. Now we've got Santa's lips. Again, I didn't want to make him trampy girly lips, so it's just kind of a pale rosy color. Now it's difficult to tell, but I'm actually using two different shades of and I'll use the inverted commas quote of white here. So I'm using actual white for doing Santa's um, fluffy hat trim and for doing the whites of the eyes. After that, 
I'm going to switch over to a very pale grey. Now, if you don't have a pale grey, just continue with the white. You and I both know that this is yours and you can do whatever you want with it. So this is my pale grey and that's why I said like you can barely see the difference. But I just wanted to show that there, and I guess give it a little bit more nuance of detail. And of course most of what we do here is then Santa's beard. Because, you know, in the age of Santa, that is always the largest part to do. And we'll come along. Now, what I love about the, um, about the beard pieces is just the dimension that we get on them by using a curvy um, stitch. Yes, it does take longer to stitch out, but my, it makes it just give that little bit more detail to exactly what we're doing. And we'll come through. And you can see there is quite a lot. of um of beard here so there's 12 colors all together but when you take out the outline color it really just means that there's not 12 colors at all it means that there's about eight and this would be the perfect project if you had a child or a grandchild who wanted to start stitching themselves this would be a great one to get them doing because it is such a simple um, single hooping design. Now you could actually hoop your fabric if you wanted to. The reason I chose not to is really just that I did not want um, to waste extra fabric and I knew that the outline stitch that I was going to be using would be heavy enough to hold it all in place. And we come through. The other thing that I've done with this to make the stitching a little bit quicker is I've made sure that there's not jump stitches where there doesn't where they don't need to be and what that means is that the machine doesn't stop and slow down to form those jumps so next question that we get is what sizes come with this project so the designs themselves come in three sizes and it's 10 by 14 10 by 16 and 11 by 18 now I know that the first thing people are going to say is but I want it for my machine and the reason I haven't gone smaller than that is because the stockings themselves become quite small and narrow and almost getting to that unusable I mean decorative is still a point don't get me wrong um, so this is just something that I'm trying for those who have upgraded to those larger hoops and who have found that there aren't a lot of designs for them this is me creating that design That'll, that uses up just those massive hoops and I've gone for the largest hoop in each brand now the color guide that I've given uses a really pale aquary color here however I had in my stash a multicolored blue going from blue to white and I thought that could really come in as snow and that's why I've used this color as my background. So please do feel free 
to get creative when you are doing this. And again, just to distinguish between the background and the main part of our design, I've actually used a different stitch here. It's still gonna hold down our mylar and look fantastic. But again, it just gives that little bit of differentiation. Okay. And then we're nearly done here. And you can see, I'm just liking that mottled effect that the multi-tonal thread or graduated thread is giving me. And then we're going to go into all of those little teeny tiny bits just to finish that off. Now, once we've done that, we come to the last part of our stitching, which is adding in the lead light. And this is what gives the design the drama. So, we are going to take our black or darkest, darkest, darkest gray thread and then we're going to start stitching. Now again, I've done this to avoid as many um, jump stitches as possible. But as I said, this is the part that takes the longest. Because it goes all the way over the entire design. But I love how as you watch it going, it just starts to build the design up. Now, if you don't have mylar, that is absolutely okay. You can stitch this without mylar. You just won't get the glittery look, but you're still gonna get the same drama. And I love it when I do it on this speed because I almost feel like I'm an artist and I'm drawing all of this in. Now, I do not recommend resizing these designs at all. And I say that for a couple of reasons. The first one is because of the width of the stitching that we have to use to allow the mylar to show through. As soon as you start making that smaller, it is going to affect that. Second reason is the width of the satin stitch. Whilst we're not joining designs, the smaller a satin stitch gets, the more difficult um, and the more trouble you will have with creating that satin without the thread breaking and i'm pretty ecstatic at the moment that my thread has not um broken at all on the black because we all know that black is the most difficult to use and of course you can see how much bobbin fill that we're using with this um so and it's for those reasons that i would not resize this now i know a lot of you will say well i have software i can put it through my software um look you can please do so at your own um and i guess what i'm trying to say here is if you choose to do that Please don't then come back and say it didn't work. There's something wrong with the design. Um, because as soon as you start playing with that, it really, I, I have no guarantee on whether or not that would work. Okay. Now you can see there, because of the sheer 
um, and I've noticed that just as it goes past down and around that little bit you can see that the black outline is probably about two or three mil outside I'm not worried about that and the reason that that occurs is because we have a lot of stitches um, and therefore there is just that little bit of pulling in but what we're going to do when we join this is we're going to stitch just inside of that stitching line so you are not going to see any of that okay and we're about probably two-thirds of the way through our outline here and you can really see just how it's it's coming together and it just it really does just put a smile on my face okay so the last bit that we need to do is just do our little eye area here those eyes off and then we've got our completed Santa now the next thing that we're going to do is stitch out our topper so again I'm using the same piece of fabric and I've used one 30 centimeter strip right across the width of my fabric for this but having said that I'm stingy if you like to leave a little bit more space you might want to make sure that you have a little bit more fabric and what I've done is I've loaded up my design and then I've added a name to the top of it so the first thing that I'm going to do is stitch down colorway one and colorway one comes through and not only does the outline but also does the quilting and again I'm using that same thread that I used for the background which in my case is the multi-tonal thread now you can use whatever color you wish and I'm going with the bubble topper. Now we can actually um, create the topper a little bit larger width wise than it needs to be, just so that it gives you a little bit of playroom. Once we've done that, I'm going to change over and I've found this beautiful um, metallic thread. Now it's only average quality. It's just been in my stash for a while. So I'm going to come through and I'm going to add a little bit of thread serum. And the thread serum is just a silicon based lubricant. And what that is going to do is it is going to allow the thread to pass through really beautifully. And then we are going to stitch out the name. Now remember, you can use the inbuilt stitches in your machine or the inbuilt lettering sorry in your embroidery machine to add the name that you want to the nameplate here uh, or the stocking top you don't even have to put a nameplate on you don't even have to put a stocking top on totally up to you and then I'm coming through but I thought this multi-tonal color again going into those blues was just a beautiful way to stitch out the name on this one. Okay, and we're nearly done. God bless um, my forethought and planning by giving my children short names. okay and once we've done that we can then move over and start constructing the stocking so you want to come through and change over to um, sewing mode 
you then want to mark up the center point in both the top of the main piece and the bottom of the topper which sounds ridiculous when you say it and then I'm going to come through and match those lines up now near enough is good enough you always have the opportunity to restitch if you're worried about your stitching pop in some water soluble thread that way it'd be easy to undo it but I'm going to come through line those up and you'll see that that's curved and that's okay it's supposed to be and then now the trick here is to stitch just on the inside of where that line is and that way you're not going to see any of those um, basting or outline stitches that we created and we'll come along Now, as I said, this is a little bit, um, the topper is a little bit larger. So what you can now do is trim that through, or you can do that trim as you stitch it down. So now I'm going to come through and I've got my backing fabric. Now, my, for me, my backing fabric was the last piece of that um, 30 centimeters that I had cut and I'm laying that right across or right on top of with right sides together my stocking if you want to trim before you do this you can do that nothing wrong with that whatsoever just make sure the entire stocking top is covered once we've got that we're going to come through and stitch now as I said I'm going to line up from the top of the stocking here making sure that my needle is threaded so that that is a clear joint so I'm just getting rid of some of the excess there on the stocking topper to make it join up beautifully and you can see there that I'm then stitching the inside of the stocking around take your time um, I like doing this on a really slow this is actually sped up um, I like doing this really slow so that I am getting a much nicer stitch out Curves are always the hardest. I love that my machine um, has the ability to lift the presser foot when I stop stitching, meaning that I can curve around as I go. And then, so now we're coming up again to the end. And again, you'll see, I'm just going to stitch that in a straight line. So I'm just going to take off those extra edges there. So now we're going to trim around um, and pull it right way through and then to finish you're going to put a binding on the top and what you are left with is this magnificent finished Santa stocking. Thank you for joining us today and I look forward to seeing you next time.